now so that we have um, everything recorded. So uh, real quick, just some Zoom etiquette guys and gals. Uh, this is the main stage. Mics and videos are off automatically in our breakout rooms. Um, we, by default, mics and audio or mics and camera will be off. You could turn them on. We ask that you don't unless otherwise uh, communicated to you by the presenter. So um, let's keep it uh, nice and, and, and quiet for our speakers. Um, tomorrow afternoon, we'll have our boot camp sessions. Uh, this is where if you're using any of our StuCamp products uh, or any of our simulations, uh, you'll get a deep dive into each one of those. It's a nice prep session for, uh, for next semester and just getting a more hands-on uh, feel and approach to some of our simulations. You'll get, you know, it's a very intimate uh, session. You'll get live Q&A and, and get to play through uh, some of our new, newest simulations. And that's tomorrow afternoon. You'll see that in the agenda. Um, a big thing, all right, student team, if we can post the link to the launch event next week in the chat, that will be fantastic. We have an exciting launch event planned next week. I want to make sure that link gets, gets thrown into the chat. Um, we're going to be launching some new products and we're going to make, we're, we are making updates to some of our flagship products, some exciting updates. So uh, simulations like Mimic Pro, Mimic Social, those are getting some pretty awesome updates and ones that you all have been asking for a, a while. And so we're excited to show those off throughout the events uh, then over the next couple of days, we'll uh, show some hype videos to give you guys a little teaser um, as far as what's going on with those simulations. Uh, and then um, we have two new simulations that we will be announcing and showing off at that event next week. Our marketing management bundle uh, it's a it's a courseware that involves uh, curriculum and a marketing management simulation, and so we're excited to uh, show that off next week. And then, as well as a mimic our mimic advertising simulation, uh, it goes perfectly with our our advertising text makes uh, makes a fantastic bundle. And so we're excited to beef up that that courseware uh, for you all. So once again, that's next Friday. Uh, June 25th, I believe. Um, I don't know if my math works. Maybe it's in two Fridays. But anyways, it's June 25th at 10 a.m. Uh, Mountain Standard Time. The link's in there. You'll have everything. And we're excited for that event. If you're at our last one, uh, those are really fun, uh, fun times to have with you guys. So uh, the other thing is we do have a, uh, we've been doing giveaways to lead up to this event, right? And so uh, we have an announcement. Last week, we had an iMac, the brand new iMac. We were giving that away to registrants to this event. And we have a winner. I'm going to announce the winner right here, right now. And it is Scott Davis from the University of Houston downtown. So if Scott Davis is in the room, congratulations. Uh, I am super jealous because that new iMac looks amazing. So uh, we'll work with you, Scott, and uh, get that shipped over to you. But this week, ladies and gentlemen, we are giving away a $1,000 airline voucher, okay? So if you've got colleagues next door who haven't been on, uh, who haven't registered yet, send them the invite. Let's get them here. Uh, the more, the merrier. Uh, and so uh, we'll announce the winner of that flight uh, voucher, thousand dollar flight voucher at the end of ProfCon. Uh, if you're already here, you don't have to do anything. You're already entered in to win. All right. So um, I think that is it. How this is going to roll is we're going to have uh, Stuart Draper, the founder and CEO of StuCant, jump in and he's going to kick ProfCon off for us. And uh, he has an excellent presentation uh, planned. And then after Stu, uh, we'll go right through uh, the, the, the rest of ProfCon on the main stage, and then we'll break out into our, uh, our breakout sessions. And so, 
Uh, without any further ado, I'm going to jump off. I'm going to turn pass the reins over to Stuart Draper. Looks like he is in and live. And we're good. Let's do a quick audio test, Mr. Stuart Draper. Good to be with you guys. Is that working, Trevor? No audio. No audio. Okay. Weird. Yeah. Definitely have audio according to everyone else, Trevor. You, you just scared. Oh. No audio for me. Hopefully you guys heard me throughout the session. It's probably because. So. All right. We'll see you. Thanks. That's interesting. All right. Glad to be with you guys. Thanks so much for being here and being a part of the ProfCon event. I'm going to go ahead and jump into my screen share here and we will rock and roll. Thanks for being a part of ProfCon, you guys. If I have a test, an upfront exam for all of those in attendance, chat in make sure you've got on all panelists and attendees if you know the stu kent mission if you know the mission at stu kent and you're the first person to chat it in i want to give you a quick we'll, we'll send you some stu kent swag as a reward if if you can and it, by the way if it takes a minute if no one's like oh i i don't i, I know i've heard it once but um I don't remember it. If you go find it off of the Stu Kent website, if you can chat in our mission at Stu Kent before I go and show it to the world in just one second, then you will get, oh, boom, Ryan Kroger with the win. He found it. Good work, Ryan. So the mission at Stu Kent, as you can see in Ryan's chat, help educators, help students, help the world. Stu Kent team, take note. Let's make sure to send him some swag. Uh, the mission at Stu Kent, you guys, help educators, help students, help the world, is one that we deeply believe in and have stayed focused on now for seven and a half years. It's paid off. Uh, we've been able to do it. We've seen the results. And I hope today, as I share a couple of experiences from uh, of folks from industry that I speak with on video, that you will see this mission in its full uh, effect. Good, good to see that others saw it once they got it. All right, today, my, my topic, we're gonna talk about pedagogy. I believe that I've got the recipe for the perfect pedagogy. Um, sometimes it's hard to put all the ingredients together. I'm gonna share how we believe we can do that and, and help you do that. Uh, and perfection, you know, it's it's unreal, but we get there, we get we 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 fight for it, we work for it day in and day out. Some of you that have been with Stu Kent may have received one of these little cards I send out. I've even got one here on my desk right now. Looks like this. It's got my wife's amazing chocolate chip recipe, and you can uh, you can try it out. It's there's no secret sauce here. We we love to share it. We think they're the best. On the back, we talk about how Stu Kent has a recipe too, and so. Uh, in the ingredients, we've got a courseware platform called Edify. We've got a simulation platform we call Mimic. This allows us to do up-to-date courseware and simulations that give hands-on real-world experience, first-in-the-world type of technology that's done in a way that's never been done before for education. Uh, mix in with that some expert sessions where industries, industry folks are speaking about their experience doing the things we're talking about in the courseware. We've got these new video case studies. Don't think of them like a Harvard case study. We're trying to do them for more and more of our courseware as we keep going and growing. Um, we have a virtual TA organization. It's our support system at Stu Kent for you guys, for you, not just you guys as educators, but also for your students. Uh, we have the Stu Kent Certificates of Completion and Stu Kent Certificates of Knowledge now. I'll speak more about all of this in greater detail. You'll see on the right-hand side of this slide, educators. You guys are 
the key ingredient. We want to team up with you. As you saw in the mission, it's help educators help students help the world. We want to do this with you guys. We strive each and every day to keep building what you guys want and need so that we can best help you. Um, step one in the process of putting together all these ingredients for the perfect pedagogy. We want you to know your customer success representative. If you're using StuKit for onboarding and course creation, they can help you out. They'll do a mid-semester check-in and see how things are going with you. Uh, they'll also help you with grading if you need it. If you have questions related to how, th how things are graded, what weights you want to put on different aspects of the simulation performance, things like that. If you need to reset quizzes, if, if anything comes up between your customer success representative and or the virtual TA team, we can take care of you in, in, in relation to all of this. As educators, you guys get an assigned dedicated customer success representative. If you don't know who yours is, reach out to the virtual TA team and they can help you out with that. Okay, uh, stukent.com um, or support at stukent.com is the best way to reach out to virtual TA if you haven't, if you're not aware of that already. They can help you choose your resources, okay? Um, as a customer success rep, they know all of the different things that are available to you. And sometimes something that we make available to you that's a really awesome resource could be right under your nose and you just don't see it. So take the time, speak with one of them. Even if you've used this for years, it might be good with the, all of the updates and changes that are coming that you take some time to sit down and visit with one of our uh, customer success reps. So there is a distinguishing difference between customer success reps and virtual TAs. I wanna make that clear once again, virtual TAs are there mostly for your students. They can also help you. Uh, if for some reason your customer success rep isn't available right away, the virtual TAs, our, our, support system, our support team can help you. But a customer success rep is there uh, from day one now. It's a new team we just started last year dedicated to help you get onboarded, help you with your first course creation. And then they are there as a direct contact for you as educators. Events like ProfCon, simulation boot camps that we put on, author webinars, product launches, the StuCamp professor community on social media, a lot of different ways that we want to help you out and make sure that you're fully prepared. Uh, guys, quick plug. If you haven't gone there, go to Facebook. Uh, a lot of people say, oh, I, I, I don't like to mix my Facebook life with my work life. This is a private group where uh, only those that are in the group will ever see the stuff you're talking about here. And we highly recommend you go and join the StuCamp Professor community on Facebook. You'll see that there's an engaged audience of folks uh, sharing and helping each other. The StuCamp virtual TAs often join and, and try to help out as well if for some reason other colleagues of yours can't answer the question for you. Okay, so step two, after you're prepared, we got to get all those things prepared uh, to have success. After you've done that, step two is organize the courseware. Choose the reading material you want. What's, what chapters are you going to require for reading? Uh, choose whether you're going to include the quizzes or not, whether you're going to use them in our platform or in your LMS. Um, there's video content expert sessions, video case studies, other videos to go through, assignments. That means you've got case studies you can do, read case studies or written case studies versus video case studies. There's also real world projects, papers that you can assign, presentations that you can assign your students. It's been fun actually to go on Google and search for uh, Bowie bags, uh, buoy for those that may not be familiar spelled like that i just chatted it in if you go search for stew camp buoy bags you'll find links to all these different uh, blog articles and presentations and video content where students have been assigned to go and do a presentation on their strategy for their social media or digital marketing efforts most likely so uh, there's also the syllabi and auto grading all of these different elements are there to help you put together what works for your course. Uh, we, we try to always build enough for in our courseware and simulations for a full semester long experience. But 
often it's not 16 weeks. It may be 14 or 15. It may be a, a one month course. Our, we try to build our courseware so that it can uh, be easily adjusted for your needs. Step three, we got to incorporate simulation. Okay. I love simulations. If you think about culinary school, the first day of class, the students get their apron, their chef's cap, the knives, and they're going to be learning in a kitchen. And they may have a lot of desk time where a chef is talking about how come baking at 375 is better than baking at 350 or whatever, right? But it's not very long before instead of just talking about it, they get to go and practice it. And the, and the master chef that's teaching the culinary class is going to go and taste their food and give them feedback on the things they may have done right or wrong, okay? Simulations provide that type of experience for business students. They get to read, they get to watch video content, they get to take quizzes, but they also get to go and put that stuff into practice. And if you can be that master chef that tastes their cooking or digs into their simulation, they will get more value as students out of it. We've got a lot of simulations uh, already built on the left-hand side. If you, were, if you were thinking of Stucant as just for digital marketing, it's more than that. And uh, we, we have a big vision for a lot of additional simulation content that's coming your way. So stay tuned for more of that. Uh, I'm not going to dive through each bullet point. We've got a lot to cover. I'm really excited for you to hear from uh, someone from the office of the CMO at HP, head of global marketing there in Tara Egan. So I'm going to dive in and get over there as fast as I can. I've also got an intern from GNC that did her work at Stukent coming soon here in this presentation. Um, but let me get through the rest of these steps and ingredients. One last point I'll make on step three, you'll see here a line item, student screen shares, okay? I love having students come up to the front of the class and, and stand there and have to log into their account and say, okay, here's what I chose to do with with this round of the simulation. And, you know, they may not, they may be worried about sharing some of their secrets, but it's also good to have some of the students that aren't winning to stand up and say what they're doing and, and have people help them. You know, what would you guys tell Tara that she can do to improve her experience in the simulation? Uh, that is really powerful class discussion. And I think something that's underutilized. So I, I just bring it up as a point uh, sometimes we get nervous. Oh, we won't know how to answer every student's question as it relates to the work in the simulation. Let the students do that work. They're in there, they're playing, they have their strategies. And if they, if they see a student and the student is willing to be vulnerable and share their work, there's a great experience to be had there. Step four, we got to repeat steps one and two over and over again. It's a rinse and repeat process of learning that I love. The flipped classroom works very well here. Out of class, you're reading, you're playing through simulation, uh, you're watching video content, you're reading through cases, you're coming to class, talking about it, uh, and then getting to learn from your peers and your instructor, and then going back to work and coming back and adding value to a conversation. I love this approach. I feel like so much of my education was forgotten before I ever got to put it in practice years later in my career. So something I highly uh, recommend you put into practice with your course. Uh, the certifications are fun to go see. If you go to LinkedIn and search for Stukent and certificate or Stukent certified, you'll find student after student now sharing their Stukent certificate. And right there next to their HubSpot certificate, and their Google Analytics certificate on their LinkedIn profile is their Stucat certificate. It's a very uh, neat thing to see how much more uh, recognized it's become in industry. A part of why it's recognized is because we have industry folks speaking about um, or not speaking about, well, we do have them speaking. These, these folks have often spoke for us and do, done other things for Stucant in the past, but folks from Google and HubSpot have played through the simulations or 
and or they have gone through our exams for certification and said, thumbs up, Stu Kent, you're doing it right. These are the things we want students to learn. So a lot of power in that. Another thing we've added, I hope you'll point this out to your students, at the end of a simulation now, we've included these resume bullets. Professors have loved this, students love it. They can quickly uh, take a quick screenshot or they can uh, copy and paste this right into their LinkedIn profile of, as experience that they've had before they graduated at the end of the simulation. This idea originally stems from our great friend and colleague and Scott Cowley, who was telling his students, look at the beginning of the semester, here are the resume bullets you'll be able to share at the end of the semester. I love that idea. Okay, uh, step six, you gotta go get an internship. These ingredients are awesome. Give students an opportunity to go get an internship. Our, we feel like Stu Kent helps give students the tools they need to be ready for an internship. Let's dive in here. I'm going to have you watch and listen to a student I had a chance to catch up with from University of Dayton. Hey, Alyssa, thank you. Wait, I'm going to change my screen share real fast. Give me a second here, folks. New share, share computer sound, optimize screen sharing for video clip share again okay now we're ready to rock and roll this video should play much better now so much for being with me today hey guys Stuart draper here interviewing Alyssa pampina a student uh, that has been willing to take a minute and share her experiences with us Alyssa, it's good to be with you today absolutely good to be with you too thanks for having me so Alyssa, tell everyone where are you going to school I am currently a senior at the University of Dayton in Dayton, Ohio. Awesome. And what's your major there? I am majoring in communications with a concentration in public relations, as well as a double minor in marketing and Italian. So just a little bit going on, a little bit on your plate right now. Good for you. A little you. bit going on, but all with an end goal in mind. So. Hey, Alyssa, thank you so much for being with me today. Hey, guys, Stuart Draper here. This is with us. Alyssa, it's good to be with you today. Absolutely good to be with you, too. Thanks for having me. So, Alyssa, tell everyone, where are you going to school? I am currently a senior at the University of Dayton in Dayton, Ohio. Awesome. And what's your major there? I am majoring in communications with a concentration in public relations, as well as a double minor in marketing and Italian. So just a little bit going on, a little bit on your plate right now. Good for a little you. A bit going on, but all with an end goal in mind. So no worries there. Yeah, good for you. It's fantastic. So Pampina must be an Italian name. Yes. Yep. That fantastic. is my background. So cool. Did do you, either of your parents speak Italian? Yes. So my grandfather came here from Italy when he was 15. And while both my parents are Italian, my dad's side is the fluent side. So, yes. Oh, awesome. Good for you. Okay. So who was your instructor instructor there at University of Dayton that used Sukin? So Professor Irene Dickey was the professor that implemented this coursework into our course last semester. Irene has been a UD grad as well, and she's been giving back to the community with her knowledge and involvement on campus for over 30 years now. So she has been awesome throughout this whole experience. Oh, we love Professor Dickey. She has been a user of StuKent since 2014, I believe. If it's not 14, it's 15, and uh, she's great. She's produced so many uh, incredible students from the program there. So um, what was the name of the course that she taught there? Do you remember? I completed the Stu Kent's um, Mimic Social course as a part of her social media marketing class this past semester. Awesome. Okay. And what are you doing this summer for your internship? This summer, I am proud to be serving as an e-commerce marketplaces intern with GNC here in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Good for you. Fantastic. Such a go-getter. That's awesome to, one, have all those experiences you're having on campus with the uh, double minor and things like that, but then to land a, a good, a great internship with such a reputable, reputable brand like GNC, impressive. So, um, what are the day-to-day -day tasks there at your internship? Tell me a little bit about that. 
So I asked this question during my interview process with GNC and I was told, well, no day is really typical for us. So our day-to-day -day tasks vary, which was a great answer now being able to be a part of that. So our days are typically not typical. Um, you know, we have a lot of responsibilities to fulfill and they're constantly changing. However, I would say that my main day-to-day -day tasks that stay consistent would be managing inventory across multiple channels, including Amazon, Walmart, and a little bit of eBay here and there, creating modules for consumers to best understand the purpose of the goods that we're providing, as well as to easily navigate the channels at hand. And lastly, communicating with internal and external teams to ensure that we are leveraging our goods and services with the most effective methods in the industry. Wow. Okay. That sounds like a phenomenal experience. So how do you feel like mimic? So we're talking like professors are going to see this. Students are going to see this video recording later. How do you feel like your experience using mimic helped you in your job interview? Sure. So I feel that due to the reality of mimic, it has been beneficial within this setting as well as other settings. As a result of the experiences gained through the coursework, I've been able to apply the skills to my day-to-day -day tasks within this role, as well as in other roles that I partake in on campus. Cool, so tell us a little bit about that. What are some of the other roles on campus? Sure, so on campus, I serve as a marketing associate for UD Retail Operations. So essentially everything within that role is exactly what was learned within the Stu Kent course. So being able to look at the analytics of different posts that we are creating as well as our blog and just working internally to, again, ensure that we are able to do the best on our end has been a really great experience. Aside from that, I am involved with other organizations, two of which are Greek organizations as well as the Women in Business Club and the Italian Club. Okay, that is a lot on your plate. I just have to take a second, Alyssa, and tell you that I am proud of you. I, Your parents must be beaming. Like the fact that you are so driven and to give yourself all these experiences, glad that Mimic is, a, is one of them, obviously not the only reason you're able to go uh, land an internship at such a reputable brand like GNC. So good for you. It's awesome. I hope that other students that end up watching this will be inspired and choose to do more while they're on campus. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, it's, it's phenomenal. So um, do you have any advice for professors that use a simulation to teach? So from a student perspective, I would say that my advice would be to be present. And while I know that's vague, I think that while this learning experience occurred, there are things that I could have improved just to better understand um, the coursework itself if I had had a better understanding of how to utilize the resources within the simulation, mm -hmm. I would have said, uh, you know, there could have been different outcomes. However, I'm aware that that's a two way street. So I could have asked more questions and I could have been more ambitious. But at the end of the day, looking back, you know, that's something I wish I would have done and advice that I'll take with me for the future. So my advice on the, you know, professor end of it would just be to be present and be active when we're going through this. Yeah, th that's uh, that's great advice for professors listening. I think, you know, the more what you're saying is the more we can, as professors, help students realize all the resources, you know, we expect them and we hope as as simulation creators and developers that we're doing a good job of creating a good user experience where it's obvious where every last resource is so that students can go make data-driven decisions. But for professors, you know, that yeah, remember there's a learning curve for new software and that students may not see what may seem like a really obvious place to get a resource. So the more you can go through some of that stuff in the classroom, the better. I, I think that's great advice. And I, you said it's a two-way street. I'd say it's a three-way street because we as courseware providers at Stucant are on a mission to go and make sure it's a very user-friendly experience and easy for students to find their way around every last thing. So um, what do you wish that uh, professors did differently? Like if you could say, oh, I, overall, from my experience as an ed, like watching uh, my professors at University of Dayton, like what would you say, what advice would you have for professors? 
Generally, I wish that more professors used simulations like this to provide students with a better understanding of what a career may entail. So like many students, I changed my major from, you know, what I originally came in anticipating leaving with. So, mm -hmm. you know, through experiences like this, I was better able to identify where I think I would be a good fit in the long run. And when trying to, you know, navigate where I want to go with a career. So the experience of using this is likely to become a reality at some point or not. You know, it's kind of, was this a good experience? Did this teach you something? Can you see yourself doing this? And I think it's something that benefits us as students more than other tools being used in the classroom uh, from an education perspective. Okay. That's I mean, I love hearing that, the, the part about the simulation, more simulation. When you say that, is it because you, 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 did you just like, like, do you feel like when you use simulation, it brings it more to life for you or that it just is better than just reading? You also get the practice. What for you was the big thing about simulation that you, you're saying, I wish there was more of that in courses? I think within this simulation specifically, it was the holistic approach. So for us being kind of the only ones in control of what we are doing, being able to look at how the budget is functioning and making all those decisions on our own to understand how omni-channels function within specific roles was a really great understanding because sitting in the role that I'm in now and within roles that I've been in in the past, it allows us to make more sense of what's going on around us because working in a team, you're a small part of it. Whereas if you're the only one working on it, you kind of have to be responsible for everything to ensure that you're functioning properly. That is, you are wise beyond your years. Alyssa Pampina from University of Dayton, thank you so much for being with us today. I commend you. I just want to like applaud and, and I'm sure professors on the other end are going, wow, this one's sharp. C congrats on your success so far on the internship. Thank I hope you. it goes really well with the rest of it. You have a very bright future, young lady. Thanks for being with us today. Thanks, Stu. I appreciate it. Have a good one. All right. Impressive, right? I feel like if you, this is the baking process of the perfect pedagogy when you get them into an internship. And you got to, you know, yes, you can help them with it. A lot of it falls back on the students, encouraging them to go and share their experience with simulation as a part of their interview will help them with the job. We had a student at Cal Poly get his internship at Adobe and his job at Google. And he says, he, I just used my experience with the simulation in both interviews and it worked really well for me. So uh, after you've got the internship knocked out, you want to help prepare them for after they graduate right and you got to listen to what the industry wants so i've found i've uh, got tara agan here and eve from hp to speak with you here we go all right thank you guys so much Tara and Eve for being with me. Can you guys tell us a little bit about what you're doing at HP today? Yeah, I'm Tara Agan and I lead strategic planning operations and office of the CMO. And part of that responsibility is marketing lab and Eve leads marketing lab. Marketing lab, Eve, do you wanna tell us what marketing lab is? Of course, so marketing lab is our career development growth and learning experience for the global marketing team. So part of the initiative that we do is we help marketer kind of discover their ultimate career destination through a number of activities and learning and training is a byproduct of this exercise. Fantastic. So how did you guys come across Stukin? Well, it actually was me. Uh, as part of my learning and growth myself, I was challenging to look outside of HP and understand who's teaching digital marketing, what's happening across that marketplace opportunity. I signed up for a course with Columbia University. Uh, I actually had done a program 10 years ago around executive education for financial leadership. 
And I really was attracted to their program. And inside of it, that's where they featured uh, Stukin and Mimic Pro. Fantastic. So good, super commendable, by the way, that you're taking time to continue to upscale and learn and go back and, and do a course with Columbia. We've enjoyed our relationship with them. Um, so you said you used Mimic Pro, the digital yeah. marketing simulation. Yeah, we actually, I went through two simulations as part of that coursework. One was search simulation and the other was social media. Uh -huh. um, and I have to tell you, I loved, loved, loved the search one. I am not much of a social media person or a social community person. So I didn't do as well on that one, but it was, it was fun um, all the way around. Cool. So what do you think helped you get the most out of the simulations? It was really the competition. It was really the, I'd say a couple of things, you know, with, I, I, there was probably over 250 classmates inside of our total experience for that fall 2020 session. Um, I love the fact that I needed to compete against them. Um, so that was one motivator for me. The second was just the learning opportunity. I had never in my life thought about what it would be to actually lead search. And so the opportunity to dig in deep and understand as part of Kent's camera castle, being a new employee, having to improve sales, looking for new ways to kind of bring Kent's camera castle back into, I'd call it the limelight, and then having the opportunity to do everything from writing direct mail copy to actually writing a landing page and really thinking through search words. I had no idea that's what the job entailed, although Obviously, both Eve and I have a ton of colleagues that lead and run search here. So that was to me just something super, super cool. And I loved it. And actually, what I'm super proud of is two things. One is I went to the head of search, Val Gabriel here at HP, and I asked him, like, what should I really be focused on? And he was my coach behind the scenes to some degree. But actually, I was the leader on the leaderboard in the competition against all my classmates for the entire 10 rounds on revenue and profit. I did better on click-through rate and some of the other search metrics. But, you know, the, the way that I kind of grew myself into that opportunity was understanding how business is run at HP and, more importantly, what we get credit for as a total marketing experience. Um, which is you better make sure you drive more revenue and you have profit attached to it. Yeah. Right? That's what I loved about it. I am such a big fan of that search simulator. Fantastic. So <laughs> thank you so much after that experience or maybe during that experience for reaching out to me on LinkedIn. Yeah. It's been so great to be connected. Your team then used Stuka internally. Uh, how did that go? And maybe Eve, you can speak to this as well. What did I would love her to. It? I, and, you know, Eve knows I am like always glass half full. I'm like, oh, my gosh, you've got to go check this out. I think it would be super cool for our marketers and even our search team to use it. So Eve will tell you about, you know, once again, one of my ideas that actually did work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I think we add um, kind of a, a little pain point for marketers to really understand what SEO, SEM is all about. We had just started this new team internally uh, in a house search agency, if you want to call it this way, you know, and creating that dynamic with marketer and their specialists in search. So they had just gone through a full training of the entire team and we thought, this is on point. Let's go through a simulation, use your service to actually do a competition between the search team, the specialists and marketers, and really kind of having them go through the entire process so they can understand what it means, right? What are the different things that you learn through each of the round that builds up at the end? Um, the fact that we created that competition uh, generated a lot of interest and involvement. So we had about 100 people participating. Um, and believe it or not, it's actually marketers that won the final rounds <laughs> versus the specialists, which was a pretty good kick out of this, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. So did it create some camaraderie for the team as they kind of played and competed? Oh yeah, definitely. There was a lot of exchange um, through the 
we will call it community if you want, that we had created uh, during that uh, six weeks period. There was a lot of exchange and trying to get some tricks and tips to get better. Um, we had a fantastic professor helping us, Jeff Larson. He was super involved in trying to help marketer gain more knowledge um, during the first couple of rounds of practice uh, before we kicked off on uh, the third and fourth round. Oh, yeah, great. I think the tutoring aspect was awesome, Stuart. I loved the fact I had that in my Columbia University course for digital marketing, but I think what Jeff did is take it to the next level. I think there was a lot more interaction. There was a lot more personalization. I think he really under. I, I think people asked a lot of questions, you know, which was super cool. But I really loved that aspect. That was that kind of tutoring or personal coaching through the rounds that really made a difference for our HP marketers and our search specialists. Oh, good. I really appreciate you guys sharing that specifically. So we're here with marketing professors today, right? Yeah. And uh, you mentioned that Jeff was very helpful, that that, that time with Q&A and kind of breaking down what's going on with the simulation was helpful for your team. Uh, what other advice would you have for marketing professors as they work to prepare students in general for a job? That you know, obviously, a dream company to work for at HP, oh. um, and their students are like just hungry for opportunities to come and work for a company like yours. What are some of the things you would say for marketing professors, specifically as it relates to as it relates to teaching with simulation, but then more in general terms as well? Love to hear some of your thoughts on that. Eve, why don't you start, and uh, I'll compliment. Yeah, I think the best uh, part about the relationship we created with Jeff is he was so willing to be versatile and personalized to adapting himself to our audience and the, the reality of how we work at HP with search. It's it's a bit complex of a structure and he was super willing to be um versatile in his approach, right? He also really toned it down um, at the beginning, um, making it very basic because we add various level of experience, right? And knowledge. So I think that was one of the best thing is like breaking it down and making it super simple to understand. I believe that the structure as well that you're using within Mimic Pro is really helpful to actually break this down and building up through each of the rounds so you understand better how you can optimize throughout. Um, as a professor, I think that um, using the language um, was key, right? So in explaining um, some of the acronyms or like technical wording, um, Jeff did a really good job on this, making sure that people understood um, no question was a bad question kind of thing, right? So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That, that's hard for professors. You know, they have a student that's, say, a, a music major, not a business major that decides to sign up and take the, the digital marketing class. And so you have this range. It's very important to start with, hey, I've got to talk to those at the most basic level that are still getting gaining an understanding versus also the same a student in the class that got their internship at HP and already had some experience doing this as an example. And and so did you guys see that, by the way, where um, some of the specialists were like, hey, you know, we already know this stuff, so we're not putting as much time and attention into it or um, this isn't as real to life for me because I know how the real tools work, whereas you marketing uh, other marketing discipline folks may not understand. Tell me about that experience, Eve. Did, did you see any of that? <laughs> yeah. So I think that uh, for the first two rounds, the search team was like, no, nah, I can manage this, right? I know how to do this. This is my job, right? And all of a sudden, you know, realizing when they got into round two that, hold on a second, like this is a little bit different than what I do normally. And yet, I think I need to use the tool to understand better how I can optimize and maximize my return on investment, right? So there was a couple of people that were caught, I think, at round two and three and be like, oh, okay, I think I need to keep up, get some hours as well to understand what I've missed so far, ask my colleagues so I can catch up with the whole thing, right? Um, and the competition being the fact that they're specialists, I think it kind of worked a little bit with their ego, right? Is, you know, I need to show up and show that actually I know what I'm doing, it's my job, right? So mm -hmm. 
yeah, that was definitely uh, something, a phenomenon that was present in, in the search team. Yeah, I was just going to compliment both what you shared with you, Stuart, on two levels. One is, you know, for marketing professors out there, it, you really do become a, a, an incredible coach in this opportunity. You know, when you teach something, you know, I always say this to my husband. I'm like, look, I am not a verbal learner. You have to show me what you're actually doing. You got to sketch it out. You've got to draw it. You've got to send me a picture. And I have a better way of retaining that. I really felt that both the search and the social media simulators did that for me. I don't think anyone could have instructed me to actually say, this is the theory of search, or this is why we do search, or this is how you actually do something for social media influencers without actually going through that activity. And that's what I loved about it. And what I love again about our HP marketer and search specialist experience is exactly what Eve said. Jeff really was a coach who gave a great baseline, the baseline built, and through that building, you also had those experience to match what was going to happen next. Uh, and so again, you, you didn't leave a lot of room for, uh, I'd call it um, a lot of curiosity, but at the same time, the more curious participants for HP actually turned out to be the marketers who ironically enough, the search specialist had said to us originally, we had to teach more marketers how to do search so they had to work with us well, guess what? We not only taught them how to work with them, but they might actually be able to take this as a career path moving forward and go into the search in-house agency. Oh, fantastic. So Tara, yeah. uh, when you guys are looking for recent graduates, what are some of the things you're hoping that these students are coming away from their four-year degree with? I would say a couple of things. One is you know, always, 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 I just said the word a little bit earlier, curiosity. You know, curiosity mm -hmm. drives a ton of creativity. And inside of our company, as Eve can also attest, marketing is looked at as a creative center. I always say that the two most creative jobs you can have at HP are marketing and engineering. So we're looking for curiosity to drive creativity. The second thing we're looking for is capability. What have they learned in four years or if they've gone on for a master's in business out of those experiences, what can they bring to HP that is what I would call forward capable, right? There's a lot of things we do here today that are standards. There's a lot of approaches we have. There's a lot of things that Eve is doing around skill sets and skills, but we would love marketers to come in and say, you know, this is a 21st century habit that we're doing, or here's something that I actually experienced that I think would make HP more competitive, make HP more customer centric and connected to our customers. I think that's the two big things that we're looking for. The last thing that I personally look for is someone who's an active learner. I really do believe that in order to grow in your career, as Eve said earlier, you have to understand the learning journey you're on. You have to be an active learner and challenge yourself. There's absolutely no way, no matter what level you get to inside of HP, that you'll know it all. So your ability to constantly assess what do I need to know and how do I go learn it is super important. So in marketing, that's really Eve's responsibility with Marketing Lab. It is a passion of both of ours to really drive what that is going to be next for marketers. But I can tell you, we have a ton of marketers coming to us now saying, here are things that we really think we should learn next, or here's the things that would really help develop marketers. So again, when I come back to what you've created, Stuart, you know, we're super passionate about the ability to not only teach, but to actually simulate what folks have to need need to know in their jobs. Okay. For the sake of time, I've got to stop it right there. You guys, I hope you enjoyed that. I, I, I hope to do more of this where uh, folks from industry that happen to be in an executive MBA program that uses the simulation have a chance to come and speak about their experience and it's a very different perspective than I would imagine the average student you guys are teaching. Uh, and I just love what she shares. There's so many uh, important things that you guys can use as takeaways as you go back to the, to the classroom and to the Zoom 
lessons you're going to be teaching. Uh, at the end here, playing on the recipe idea, I say serve it to them warm. Uh, I have a note here. There's more soft skills coming. So uh, she, Tara goes on to talk in more detail about how important soft skills are for a job ready graduate. And in our simulations, we have an inbox feature with all of the new simulations in Mimic app where um, a colleague will ask a question of the student uh, or a, 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 a co-worker in the simulation will, will email and ask the student a question and the student has to choose how they're going to respond. And we can use that for a lot of soft skills training. We're looking forward to advancing that feature some more and stay tuned as we share that and show more of that in our upcoming product launches. Um, thank you guys for being with me today. Um, we email a lot, we're on social a lot. Those are two of the main ways we grow. It's the ways we're able to get in front of you guys. We went to 120 different marketing educator conferences in 2019, if you can believe that. Uh, we went to five in 2020 before all of travel got shut down. So our forms of growth have come from email marketing, social media marketing, word of mouth, a little bit of search. Um, on the word of mouth front, if you guys don't mind continuing to spread the good word of what we're doing at Stu Kent, uh, we firmly believe that together we can help educators and, and you guys can go help your students and they can go help the world. Thanks for being with me today. I'm still available. Stuart at StuKent.com. Hit me up anytime. And I'm on LinkedIn, uh, pretty active there. Thanks so much for being with me today. And I hope you enjoy the rest of ProfCon. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Stuart. Appreciate, uh, appreciate your message. Um, for those of you who joined during the session, I'm Trevor Erickson, the CMO here at StuCan. We had a few hiccups with the good old Zoom, um, but it looks like we're, we're up and running. And so um, if you ever have questions about what's going on, uh, what sessions can I, can I jump into? If you go to our agenda page, <clears throat> if you just go to Google and type in uh, Stu Camp ProfCon, you'll land, you'll land at our, on our ProfCon event page. And on that page, there's a link to the agenda. If there's anyone that has the link, um, anyone from Stu Camp in here that can post the agenda link here in the chat, always go back to that page. That's where all of the links will be um, for all the different sessions. And so uh, next up at, at, in about one minute, we have uh, Terry Sullivan. And that will be, um, there's the agenda link. Oh, thank you guys for posting that. I'm gonna post Terry's Zoom link here. Uh, where, since we are using Zoom, each session will have their own links and that agenda page has all of the links. And so you can bounce around, right? You can jump into this one, jump into that one. We're recording everything. Um, I posted the, the link over to uh, Terry's uh, session that starts now. Um, it is, uh, it's another keynote session and Terry is going to be talking about the missing pieces of marketing management. Uh, Abby, our wonderful student team member will be the host of that room. And so, uh, feel free to jump over there after Terry's we'll have another keynote uh, with, um, with Donald Kelly. And then that'll take us to about 10 45 AM mountain standard time, mountain time. And then at 11 a.m. Mountain Time, all of the breakout sessions will start and we'll have uh, three to four different breakout sessions going on at any given time. Check the agenda page and uh, and that's where you'll get all the information. So I'll hang around here in case you guys have any questions. Then, and then I'll once I start seeing a lot of folks leaving this room and going over to Terry's without any problems. Um, then we'll close this one out, but, uh, happy to, I'm being told that I can end this now. So we're going to shut this one down and then we're going to move over to Terry's. Thank you guys so much. And, uh, here's two, three days of, of ProfCon.